video number two on looking at Redox stuff, and we're going to look at these questions which involves um, considering and finding out the strongest oxidant and reductant. Um, the next one is looking at if something is actually acting as an oxidant or if we have um, redox in general. And the other one is looking at um, drawing and writing out complex um, half equations and an overall equation for it as well. So we'll start off with the first one. Hopefully I can get this in under 10 minutes as well. Consider the following overall reactions for these, for, from, sorry, these galvanic cells. I've got chromium solid um, is reacting with um, iron ions and then we have that's forming the chromium ions and forming um, it's called iron solid. What I want to find out is the strongest oxidant and the strongest reductant in these guys. So what I'm going to first of all do is I'm just going to write out a mini electrochemical series based on what we've got here. So I've got Remember, on the electrochemical series, I'll just put a massive arrow here, and I'll say our ions are on this side of the electrochemical series, and our solids are on this side of the electrochemical series. If I put Fe here in the middle, I'm going to look at what's going to happen and what must be around this. According to this reaction, okay, this is a spontaneous reaction. That means if something's going to react with iron 2+, it must be below it on this side here. Because we have to have that diagonal down link, that must mean this chromium here is on this side. Okay? Because anything that reacts with iron 2 plus as a reactant must be below it on the right hand side. Because our we know our ions, if you look at our electrochemical series, every single ion is on this hand side here. All right, all these ions are there. Um, our so then we have must this must be below iron there. Next we have lead and iron solid. Iron two plus is going to form iron solid here, all right, because that's the way it's done there. Okay, and that means chromium three plus must be on this side here because it's the opposite. All right. I can add in my electrons here as well if I want two electrons there, three electrons there. It doesn't really matter. All right. But we have our overall things here. Now, for iron solid to react with lead 2 plus, the lead 2 plus must be above and to the left-hand side of this iron solid. So the lead 2 plus must be up here. Aqueous must go to lead solid. Okay? And that'll be plus two electrons there as well. Okay, because lead two plus reacts with this, it has to have that diagonally down. Um, uh, what's it called? Diagonally down link. Now, from this information, we can find our strongest ox oxidant, strongest reductant. Looking at our electrochemical series, okay, the first thing which is in the podcast you should do every time you go to your data booklet is write strong as an ox up the top here, strong ox, and then strong reductant down the bottom right hand side. So strong oxidant up the top here and strong reductant down the bottom here. And that will tell you that this must be the strongest oxidant and this must be the strongest reductant. So it must be lead ions or PB2 plus aqueous equals strong ox and chromium or all right moving on anyway um, we've got um, a question which deals with understanding if something's acting as an oxidant okay when we have equations like this it's very hard to see um, electrons leaving or electrons being gained Okay, so this makes it very hard to say if it's going to be the oxidant or the reductant. Who knows what's going to go on? Um, the, so we can't see the electrons on the right or the left. We can't see electrons being um, given away or taken in. The easiest way to do this is to look at oxidation numbers. So if you have a whole bunch of equations like this, and you want to know if something's oxidation or reduction, or if it's an oxidant, you look at the oxidation numbers. 
and we have our rules where we have elements are zero, oxygen is negative two, hydrogen is positive one, and we have a couple of um, a couple of times where we go, that's not the case, but in general that's what we get. and um, ions are the charge. The first thing we look for is the easiest thing to see what's happening to it is we look at our, um, our for our elements because elements you know are zero and it's really quickly quick to um, look at their oxidation numbers. So I quickly look through here, I see an element here. That element must be zero. Okay? And then I look at what this is forming. From zero, is it going up or down? It's forming the copper ion. Now I know sulfate has a charge of negative two. That means that this copper ion must have a charge of positive two. All right. So therefore, its oxidation number is going up. Okay. You sing your song quickly in your head. You go, oh, duh, duh. my oxidation number is climbing up out of sight. And therefore, it's about oxidation. So if this is oxidation, it's going up out of sight. This means this thing here is our reductant, which means that this is the oxidant. So therefore, B is the correct answer. Straight away we've got it. Okay? So therefore this is being acting as the oxidant in this equation. Once again, quickly, how did we do that? We got our element is zero. We knew that straight away. We can go hone in on it. We know sulfate here is negative two, so therefore our copper here is positive two. The oxidation number went up, so therefore it must have been oxidation. So therefore this is a reductant which means this must be the oxidant. You can go through and check other things as well, but in general, that's the easiest way to do it. We can quickly look at this. Um, this is positive two here. Sorry, oxygen, negative two. Copper, positive two. Over here, sulfate, negative two. Copper, positive two. Has not changed, so therefore we don't have, it's not even redox, okay? so. There we have that. Um, carbonate is negative two. Copper must be positive two. Sulfate, negative two. Not even redox either, so not redox. This also helps you understand if something is a redox equation or not. This one here is an acid-base equation, okay, where um, the hydrogen is being donated. So it's not even redox. This one here, is it redox? Who knows? Let's have a look. Um, no, because we got sodium is always positive one because it's, it's an ion. So there, it's acting as an ion here as well. So it's positive one here as well. So this isn't even a redox either. So straight away, nothing else is redox. Only the redox here is here because we have a change in oxidation state. Okay, that's going to help you a lot. I haven't got time to do this one because I think I've got six minutes left on my um, my recording. So I'll stop this and then I'll. Um, copy these across and we'll get on to this one next. Alright, annoyingly, sadly, um, I've started answering this question already. However, my um, recording cut out, so I have to start again. Let's look at this. We've got manganate ions being oxidized to hydrogen peroxide, which is H2O2, and that forms, oh, sorry, two oxygen gas. The reaction is done with potassium permanganate solution and hydrogen peroxide acidified with dilute sulfuric acid. During the reaction, the manganese, sorry, the manganate ions are reduced to manganese 2 ions. Write two half equations and an overall equation for this reaction. To do this, we need to look at what is actually needed. What's needed is two half equations. What I needed to do there is look for the two things that are happening. Okay, got two things that are happening. I've got um, a half equation involving hydrogen peroxide, which is H2O2, and that's going to oxygen gas. So what I've done there is simply write an equation from hydrogen peroxide going to oxygen gas. My next half equation is looking at this. Um, manganate ions are being reduced to manganese 2 ions. So I've written manganate here going to manganese 2 plus. This acidified dilute sulfuric acid, there, that's not really in um, these redu redox happen things. That's just, um, it's 
happening, the reaction is happening between the potassium manganate and hydrogen peroxide. It's not happening between the sulfuric acid. You can't have a third thing coming in there. It's just going to be between these two things here. And we're only given information of that this turns into that and that that turns into that. So that's why I've written down here these things here. Problem is that these aren't balanced. We can't add them together yet because they're not balanced. We need to balance them using our steps. First of all, balancing everything that's not OH. So manganese, manganese, sorted. Okay. So everything here is balanced. We then balance the O's with H2O. Okay. To balance that, we need to balance the oxygens on these sides. We've got two here, we've got two there. That's balanced. Don't need to do anything with the H2O. On this side, however, we've got four oxygens, none on that side. So we need to balance it with four H2O on this side here. Okay? We then, number three, balance H with H plus hydrogen ions. So on this side, we've got two hydrogens. So we need to balance over here with two hydrogen ions. In this equation here, we've got four times two hydrogens, so therefore we have eight H pluses here on this side. Okay, so therefore this is now balanced. The fourth one is balance charge with electrons. Electrons are negative, so therefore we need to bring positive charge down to the other one. The overall charge on this side is zero for this guy. Over here, the overall charge, two positives, means two positives. The difference here is two. We need to get this two positive down to zero. So we need to add two electrons to it on this side. So now the overall charge is zero. Down here, our overall charge on this side here is positive seven because of eight positives and one negative. On this side, our overall charge is positive 2. So how do we get the 7 down to 2? We need to add in 5 electrons on this side. Okay. Now it's all balanced. We should put in states here. This should be probably liquid. That should be gas. Um, that should be aqueous. That should be aqueous. That should be aqueous. That should be aqueous. And that should be liquid. Okay. Um, hydrogen peroxide is always liquid anyway. So... Um, and oxygen gas, we're told is gas, and every ion that we have is an aqueous solution, is in aqueous. Now we need an overall equation. To get an overall equation, we add the two together. But before we add them together, we need to balance out our electrons. Now they're not balanced at the moment, so we need to multiply these by something. Two and five. How do we get a common denominator with two and five? How do we get a common multiple? Well, if we multiply this by 5 and this by 2, okay, we'll have 10 electrons here and we'll have 10 electrons here. So what we'll have, when we add these together, everything here multiplied by 5 to make the electrons the same, everything multiplied by here to make 2 to make the electrons the same, we get 5H2O2 plus times 2, 16H plus plus 2 manganate going to 5 oxygens plus 10 H plus plus 2 manganese ions plus 8 H2Os. Okay, almost finished because we notice we have 16 hydrogen on this side, 10 on that side. What we're going to do is cancel out the ones that we don't need and bring this down to 10 on this side makes 